So Saab has been in India for a long time now, and uh, you know, for, for, uh, for the, the focus of the company has, uh, the attention of the company has been on on the MMRCA fighter program for many many years now. Uh, you've also got the the, the Gripen E out now. Uh, what's going on with that? I mean, uh, you know, the Gripen E is a much more advanced aircraft than. Uh, what was uh, positioned in the MMRCA? So how do you th how do you see you know Saab's position playing out in, in with respect to the Gripen in India? Uh, you're right. We have been here for over seven years now, and uh, we were uh, working hard to be considered in the MMRCA. We regret that we were not selected, but we have full respect for the Indian decision and the Indian process and we are not pitching at all against that. But we know that even with the MMRCA, the Indian Air Force needs a large number of aircraft. It's difficult to say how many, but around 200 plus aircrafts are needed. And we feel that the Gripen E, as you say, the new generation Gripen, would be a perfect fit for the Indian Air Force when it comes to performance when it comes to availability, when it comes to affordability, and also transfer of technology. So we feel that Gripen would be a perfect choice for India. And, and you know, uh, the Indian Air Force is going in for medium fighters, is going in for heavy fighters with the FGFA and the MMRCA. Uh, where, does, where do you think the Gripen E would fit in to you know, the, the Indian Air Force fleet requirements? I would say that uh, replacing the, the MiG fleet that the Indian Air Force has now uh, would take a plane like, like Gripen, uh, a lighter but still very performant aircraft. So they will, as I said, fit in perfectly. So when Saab talks about, you know, uh, offering uh, the Gripen E to India, this, and this is post MMRCA or whatever, uh, what does it have in mind? We are prepared to set up a joint venture company in India and produce by, for India with Indian uh, uh, workforce. Mm -hmm. You see the mix of a large number of Indian well-educated, highly skilled engineers and Sweden's high technology in the field of aerospace is a perfect match. So, I mean, uh, you know, the, the Swedish Air Force is going to be order, ordering some Gripen E's, the Brazilian Air Force is, is already uh, in process of doing that. Uh, you know, if, if this were to come about, so, I mean, would, would the complete Gripen E production shift to India? I mean, is that what you're envisaging? Or, or, or a part of that? How, how would it work, do you think? You see, we have a lot of uh, prospects, not only the, in the countries you mentioned, but also in other countries in, in the uh, ASEAN area mm -hmm. and uh, in other areas. Uh, and uh, we feel that uh, the production for the Indian market is large enough for an Indian production, at least in the beginning. After a while, we can always discuss if it could be for export or not. But 200 aircrafts is a tall uh, demand mm -hmm. for, uh, for a production unit. We could uh, start with about five per year, and after some years, have a production of 20 or, or more aircrafts. So that's quite a big production that is possible. And, and, and do you have any, I mean, have you, uh, what kind of groundwork has, has, what kind of thought has gone into this? Is there, is there a potential base of partners in India for which, uh, I mean, uh, with whom you would uh, sort of tie up with for this, uh, if, if it were to work out? There is a large number of uh, competent Indian companies that I'm sure would be interested to take part in this mm -hmm. uh, highly interested, interesting venture. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we have uh, already prepared the ground very well. We have uh, a blueprint how the factory could look like, how the production system could, could look like in India. So we are well prepared for this. And I would like to add that when this program has, 
uh, come to maturity. We are prepared, uh, together with an Indian partner, to develop the next generation aircraft. And in fact, we need a partner in that, because Sweden is a small country, and we need partnerships in order to be able to do such a big investments in the coming generation's aircraft. And I think India would be a perfect partner in that. So, uh, I mean, would that be uh, something like the advanced medium combat aircraft program that uh, India has? You can call it whatever you want, but we are prepared to do it together with India. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, uh, going back to uh, sort of the Gripen E uh, proposition for India, uh, some would think that uh, this would be sort of a, uh, 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 an exercise to plug the gap that the LCA might leave uh, after the retirement of the MiG-21s because, uh, I mean, only two squadrons of LCAs have been ordered so far and, uh, well, the LCA Mark II is still to be developed. So is, 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 that, is that a part of South thinking? We don't pitch against anything, but what I would like to add is that uh, if this will become reality, mm -hmm. a, a joint venture with an Indian partner producing here in India, of course we would be also able to assist in uh, the uh, LCA Mark II mm -hmm. program, if that is desired. Mm -hmm. and because because uh, the two aircraft share some similar uh, similar characteristics, is that is some that? similar characteristics? Yes, yeah. but it's two very different aircraft mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. and, and and you know, in in terms of uh, you know, if you could sort of uh, elaborate on the on the industrial aspect of the proposition, I mean, where where is this sort of uh, where do you see this going? How many years time? Because Indian aerospace industry is still very, very sort of at a very nascent stage. So, uh, w what's your vision? Where, do you yeah. s where does Saab see this going? We know that uh, the demands of the Indian Air Force are uh, immediate, more or less. And we would be able to set up a production that could start less than five years after decision. And we, uh, since we are so well prepared, as I mentioned, and um, we uh, would also be helpful in using our, our own supplier base to try to convince them to come to India and set up uh, production in India. So that would also be beneficial for the Indian defense industry in general. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, uh, have, you, have you received any sort of uh, response to this proposition yet from, from the government of India? Or well, we haven't had um, discussions with them. We haven't had discussions with the Indian government yet. We have been very careful not to be seen as trying to derail any process going on. But uh, we feel that uh, the Indian government should uh, listen to us and we are hopeful that soon we can present this to the Indian government. And this is separate from any existing tender process, for instance, separate from the MMRC tender process? Yes, yes, that's what, I, independent. that's what I uh, underlined, that we are not meddling in, in, into the process going on with the uh, MMRCA. We, uh, this we see as totally separate. What has Saab been doing in terms of the you know, in terms of encouraging production in India, in terms of manufacturing? Yeah, we already have a Make in India plan for our aircraft. And, and what is, uh, I mean, what is that? Uh, we, it, it is there already because we have prepared ourselves, we have the, all the designs for a factory, the layout of the factory, how it would would look like and how the flow of products would work and we have also uh, prepared for subcontractors being in the same area. So we have done a lot of work already to produce in India. Sounds like this proposition is very advanced uh, in terms of the kind of homework that you've done. Yes. Uh, how long has it taken for you to sort of be at this stage uh, of the proposition? Well, we have been active on that a couple of years now because mm -hmm. we have seen all the time that we would fit in very well with the um, Indian Air Force need. So, I mean, you've, you've put in two years of work already for production, for potential production of, a, of the Gripen E aircraft in India, is that correct? Yes, at least for two years. 
Okay, and 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 uh, I mean it's it's uh, I mean you you must have had a lot of confidence that uh, about your proposition and uh, the kind of response you will get. So uh, you uh, about we, we, are, we are not overconfident, but we I think uh, have it. It is fair to say that we have a product that is so well suited for the Indian Air Force that sooner or later it will be recognized and uh, that we will have production here in India. So, you know, in terms of your proposition, are there any specifics you would like to share in terms of, you know, potential sites for a, for a facility for production? or an assembly line or pro potential yeah. partners that you've identified? Yeah. We have worked quite a lot on that. We have uh, visited uh, a number of, of chief ministers in different states to discuss this and on all places got very positive uh, responses. We have talked to a number of companies about uh, teaming up with us and got so far very encouraging results. So. I'm not worried about these things. These will fall into place. So, um, uh, for us, I must say that things uh, uh, look very hopeful. I'm very optimistic about uh, the developments in India and, and also about our place in that process. And, and do you think that, you know, I mean, it would be helpful for the government to put together some some special regulations, regu regulatory policies to sort of encourage and, 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 and b give a boost to this sort of enterprise were the proposition to be accepted? I think in general that uh, there is more to do to stimulate uh, foreign direct investment in defense. First step has been taken. We feel that more steps are needed in order to make this uh, a real de full development. So, um, uh, would 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 Saab's proposition to build the Gripani be an example of next steps? Well, that would uh, certainly be a, a good boost for the government to to show that there are companies, foreign companies, willing to invest in India and showing their faith in the Indian uh, developments in this field. Is there anything specific uh, in terms of policy or regulation that you know Saab would sort of hope that the government of India would consider to encourage such uh, enterprises? I think that the step to take 49% was a step in the right direction. I, f I fear that uh, you need to go further in order to really attract the high-tech industry in this field. Uh, and I think that would be the most important step forward. But Saab is sort of matching, matching the, uh, the the measures taken by the government of India in terms of improving the investment climate by bringing in this proposition. Yes, and we, we of course would like to discuss the uh, ownership structure when that day comes. Mm -hmm. What's your uh, experience been like so far mm -hmm. in terms of joint uh, ventures and, and industrial partnerships? In it? It's not very great, I must say, but we have already a joint venture in the field of aerostructures with a company uh, called Agus, former Quest, and the company is producing uh, aerostructural parts for uh, Airbus. And we foresee that this uh, activity will continue to grow and this joint venture has already been very successful. Okay, and, and, and when you say, when Saab says transfer of technology, I mean, you know, there's, there's often been criticism of many, many uh, companies offering transfer of technology which, yeah. which apparently does not uh, seem to mean exactly that, I mean, it falls short. So when Saab says that, I mean, what is that? that? That's correct. Uh, often it's uh, only sending a screwdriver and, uh, and a design, and then nothing really happens. We, we have seen many examples of that. What we mean with transfer of technology is real transfer of technology, that we gradually introduce uh, the technology in India so that the Indian workforce will be more and more acquainted with how to produce aircraft. So that will be used in the development of the next generation aircraft. 
So we mean actually real transfer of technology when we say it. And uh, you know, India. The perception is that India has a long way to go as far as you know uh, a mature aerospace industry, mature uh, dom mature domestic aerospace industry. Uh, would you agree with that? And would this what what you're proposing, what Saab is proposing? I mean. Do you, do you see it bearing fruit in, say, 15 years' time? I think it will be an immense boost to the Indian aerospace industry and defense industry in general. And I'm sure it will bear fruit much faster than 15 years from now.